anything and everything that comes up, we write new, mostly news. You know, we, we don't we don't stick to rumors and speculation too much. Mm-hmm. Mostly news. We're we're gonna branch into that. But um, we've been honestly fans of, of Earth's Mightiest Heroes since, nice. the, and that was my first my first introduction to you. I don't know about. Well, yes. I, uh, I didn't know you were uh, connected to X-Men Evolution, but technically that would be... Yeah, I only did four episodes of it, so like, kind of right near the end, but okay. uh, that's how I got my start. The head writer of that, his name is Greg Johnson, okay. he, uh, he gave me a chance, along with Craig Kyle, and, and uh, he actually recommended me to a guy for the Ninja Turtles job, so that really kind of kicked my career off. Yeah. Um, you, you said your background was in, you know, uh, film earlier. You, did you get well, I, film? I did, uh, I got a bachelor's degree in, like, a film program at University of Michigan. Mm-hmm. And then graduated. I'm like, oh, what do I do now? <laughs> the, the standard film degree graduation story. Uh, and got into advertising. So I uh, produced TV and radio commercials for like Ford Motor Company and, and like Ski Do Snowmobile. So in the area here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, right across the street, Dearborn, Michigan. Yeah. And, uh, and a little bit in Bloomfield Hills. Uh, but, uh, and it was great. Like, it's a great job, but, you know, there's just something not quite feeling about it. Mm-hmm. And I was like a creative itch that, uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to explore, you know. So I, on a, the encouragement of my wife to be, uh, I went to a graduate program at University of Southern California that was like a film business program. So it was like, I figured I'd produce commercials, maybe I could produce TV or movies or who knows what. So I kind of gave myself five years to kind of try it out. And, uh, and in the middle of the program, realized A, it wasn't for me, and B, that I wanted to write. See, Marvel Comics had offices out in LA, so I called them up, and this was before, this was right after X Men. While they were shooting Spider Man One with Tony and Wire, I'm like, "Hey, do you guys need any help?" And they're like, "Well, yeah, actually, we do." And so it's like literally the luckiest phone call of my life, at like the right time, right everything, like everything right. just kind of lined up, and I was able to just kind of hang out with Craig Kyle and Kevin Feige and all the guys that are still working at Marvel today. And, and on my way out the door, I just left my writing samples everywhere. And uh, Craig Kyle read it, and uh, he had an idea for an episode with a new character that he created called X-23. And he and I wrote that together and wrote a few more episodes of Evolution, and then uh, it kind of took off from there. Right. Yeah, um, I mean, really, I came up with a couple of questions, actually, before we even knew we had an interview with you, because there were so many questions I had to ask. Um, we'll go back to Avengers Earth, My Heroes first. Um, it was... You know, kind of it ended at season two, right. um, but there were some seeds set for future seasons. Yes. Where would a season three have gone if you were able to continue it? Well, Josh Fine, who's the producer on it, he has like a nine-year plan for it. <laughs> uh, but the one that we specifically talked about was season three, and it was uh, it was Surtur. We had uh-huh. set up Surtur as like a big villain that was kind of like looming in the, the, the shadows, and he had taken Enchantress and was messing with people all together and forging a sword from Walt Simonson's run. And uh, so that was going to be the big one. We'd kick off season three with Asgard falling to Earth. Like, okay. We didn't see it, but Surtur had waged war and destroyed that connection. And it was just a big mess. So like season three was going to be like a bunch of Surtur stuff, a bunch of Asgard on Earth stuff. And then uh, we'd also kind of peppered in, um, we'd obviously seen Wolverine, but we were going to get to see X-Men. Okay. And there, there was a comic book that we kind of did afterwards that was kind of like, you know, like little 11 page stories. But one of them was kind of a hint of what we were going to do. Or there was basically a rumor that the Wasp was a human. And that was going to pull in the X Men and Magneto and Brotherhood and all that stuff. So the season was going to be like, you know, some Surtur and a whole bunch of X Men. And eventually it would culminate in Avengers vs. X Men. Okay. Yeah. Um, what was your favorite episode of Earth Minus Heroes that you were able to do? Picking children. Right, yeah. Well, I mean, something uh, that you think about, maybe refer back to more often. The uh, the back end of season one, I think, was pretty great. The uh, the two part Ultron thing, I remember the first time I watched the second part where Ultron was just taking over every system on Earth. I loved that. And then, uh, but the one where the Avengers got split up in all the different nine realms of Asgard, I love that one too. Just to see these people, like, uh, you know, really put to the test. Yeah. Um, there was the Captain America Prisoner of War episode. Huge love for that one. Uh, Private War Doctor Doom. I love that episode. I love them all, right? Right. right. The, the Ultron episode, I, I think, maybe my favorite. Okay. Um, now, uh, I know you, uh, to switch gears here, Thor in the Dark World, one of your biggest projects probably you've yes. worked on. Um, it's coming out I, this week in IMAX 3D, October 30th. Um, yeah, I really like England and stuff, right? 
I think IMAX 3D. I think it's it was America as well. Really? Yeah, I'm excited to see uh, it to say the least. Okay, thank uh, you. It's something I, I mean I talk about. I mean I was excited for the first Thor. You know, back when Thor was still relatively a B-list character. Yeah. Um, so I mean, what uh, was your inspiration behind uh, when writing Thor? Like, well, maybe like the theme to the modus you used. Well, I think that you know, with a second superhero movie, the challenge is always all right. What now? Because you've got the origin is kind of like the easy one. It's like all right, we know that he's this arrogant prince who learns humility and becomes, you know, the the, the noble Thor that we know today. But or then what? You know, it's like, but we were able to, you know, with with you know a bunch of other writers like uh, Don Payne. Uh, uh, Robert Rodat, uh, Chris Marcus, and Steve McFeely, like, you know, we all kind of worked on it, but we really focused on, you know, what is Thor's journey in this episode, not episode, in this, <laughs> this uh, installment, and, uh, you know, I think we came up with something that, you know, speaks true to the character, and really kind of gives him, you know, a place to go. Okay. Um, right now, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is pretty big. Yeah. Would you ever consider writing an episode of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Absolutely. Okay. I, I, I'm game, man. That show, I think, is a bunch of fun. Like, it gets to play with, like, the Marvel Universe, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and, uh, you know, the entire team behind it uh, is great. And yeah. it's, it's Agent Coulson. So oh, of course. Um, how easy is it to transition from the cartoon medium to the cinematic medium when writing? You know, I mean, there's definitely different kind of parameters that you're working with. I mean, like, at the end of the day, with animation, you can kind of draw anything uh, with, with filming. I mean, these days you can kind of do anything too, but you definitely have to be able to actually go out there and shoot it, you know. And, and but it's a different audience too. With animation, not only are you getting like kids who are a little more open to craziness, and comic book fans who are extremely open to crazy things. But you know, Thor is. You know, we have to reach a mainstream audience. We have to get people off the street and be like, all right. I know there's elves and spaceships and rainbow bridges and stuff, but I swear to God, guys, it's it's okay. <laughs> Everyone just. It'll all be okay. You know? So, like, you really have to like, you really have to write it for all audiences, and not just like the comic book fans. You know, it's like the comic book fans that we love and like have supported us all the way through. But you know, we we really want to we want to make seventeen Thor movies, right? So we really have to kind of speak to everybody. Uh, so you know, we we always do it with a mind to that, and, and the secret to that, and with all the Marvel movies, is uh, really kind of like getting the characters. You know, it's like Iron Man is. That suit is awesome. You can fly around and do stuff. But Robert Downey Jr. creates such an amazing character in Tony Stark that even if he didn't have the suit, you'd want to hang out with him. You know, Car Captain America, Steve Rogers, is such a good guy, such a noble guy. And, and when he was scrawny little Cap in that movie, he loved him. You know, and Thor, it's like he's just got so much swagger and like you know, it's like and obviously not a bad body. Um, so, but it, like it's it's somebody you 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 have to care about it because if you don't care about the characters all the explosions and ships and space and all that stuff it's not going to matter alright okay. um, and that's all the like, official questions I guess my one of my last ones here is um, your favorite comic book character or someone Spider-Man Spider all of the spider -Man. okay and, and what are your takes on the Sentry how do you feel about the Sentry the Sentry yeah the Sentry the 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 yeah I that, love the Sentry okay I thought the whole Sentry Void thing was great like Paul Jenkins comic like awesome I, like he, and I mean, like I understand where he went to and what had to happen and all that stuff. But I mean, that initial comic, hey, not only is Jay Lee one of the best artists in the business, but I mean, like that comic was awesome. Like it took like the standard like you know comic book origin and really just kind of twisted it. Like mm -hmm. and the mystery of it and the sense of dread of the Void's return at the end there. I mean, I thought it was amazing. Okay, I mean that's our favorite character, so yeah. that's why. No, it's yeah. Um, and if you could write um, the next, if you were to write another Marvel movie, which character would you pick? Was it like? Century. Yeah. Uh, Out of the Marvel Cinematic, not Spider-Man, because, you know... Power Pack. Power Pack? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's something I never even think of. I think about it every day. Yeah? <laughs> sure. So, you guys? Any? Yeah, I had, a, I had a question about... Uh, well, if, if, when you're uh, approaching a character that... I, I know it's, there's not really new mm -hmm. characters in the animation world, but lesser-known characters in the animation world, and, uh, like, for example, we have... Uh, we saw Falcon in the trailer for Captain America 2. Yeah. And I Double loved Uzi's just coming off that thing. Yeah, Super I awesome. loved Falcon in the uh, in Avengers vs. Yeah. Um, Heroes. And what is that like when you're working with a character you know and you're using two different mediums where one, you you have some artwork, but two, you might actually have you know, a human being mm -hmm. to project. What's that like? 
I mean, I think that, I mean, obviously the movie looks like it's going to be taking its inspiration from the ultimate version of it, which is great, and a much more grounded real-world thing, but I mean, like, always it comes down to character. Like, what is the core of that character, and what does it speak to in people that made this character survive for decades and decades and decades, you know? Like, I think, you know, with, with Falcon, I mean, that everybody wants to fly, so that's super cool in and of itself, but I mean, like, you know, he's, I think, an idealist, and in the comic books he was a social worker, Snap Wilson, you know? Uh, he was a social worker that just wanted to make positive change in a, in a fairly dark, grim world, you know, and I think that that will continue. Uh, in mine, unfortunately, the first time you see him, he's being mind-controlled by the Red Skull, so that was a different situation, but, uh, but that, you know, what they're doing in Avengers Symbol is like that, you know, he's the positive character, uh, and that's what I love about Falcon. Okay. All right, well, we're out of time for that, but thanks so much, Chris. No Do problem. appreciate it. Very nice to meet you guys.